Hello again, everybody. Gary Furman and Stephen Wagner here. And today we are talking about newly minted Miami commit Ruben Bain, the defensive lineman from Miami Central High School, who many thought all along was going to be a Miami Hurricane. He played this thing out as long as he could, uh, taking it right up here till the final week of recruiting. Uh, and now he has pulled the trigger and told the world, I am going to play my college football for Miami and Steven, it's a sigh of relief for the Hurricanes. Uh, it would not have been a pretty situation to lose it on Ruben Bain when you consider his brother works in the program. His uncle Tolbert played for the program. He's grown up around Miami football. Uh, now it's time to make Ruben Bain a Miami Hurricanes football player. How do you see this playing out? I see this playing out really, really well for Miami. Uh, I think this definitely adds a lot of depth um, to a defensive line and edge rushers class that before this, um, you know, they they definitely needed they, they definitely needed more guys. Period. Uh, I mean, before this, they only had uh, I think one defensive lineman and two edge rushers uh, committed. For this year's up or for this year's class, uh, you add Ruben Bain into the mix. Now you're taking four uh, new guys. Now you suddenly kind of start to uh, you definitely start to feel a lot better. Um, and then you know you maybe grab one or two more guys from the transfer portal, and all of a sudden it's like, hey, you know the Canes actually did you know pretty solid in this year's class. You know they brought in a pretty decent amount of talent. And Right now, they've got three four-stars and one three-star uh, interior defensive lineman who I think personally might be like one of the most underrated uh, recruits in the country in Joshua Horton. I think he's massively talented, and you you go ahead and pair that with Ruben Bain and Jaden or and Jalen Wayne, and all of a sudden, you know, it's it feels like Miami really did you know hit it big here in this year's class. So now the question becomes, what do they do with Ruben Bain? You know, he's, he's, he's listed at six, two. I think he's more like six, one, about 240, 250 pounds. Okay. So, so what do you do with that player who is a very good football player, kind of a tweener in my opinion. So like you look at Miami and you've got Nigel E. Kelly, you got Cyrus Moss, you got Jaden Wayne, you got Mesador coming back next year. You got so you got um Achimapong coming in. You you've got some pretty good defensive ends and, and defensive end projects and prospects already in place here at Miami. Do you throw Ruben Bain into the fray at defensive end? Or Steven, I'm gonna throw this one out there for everybody. Because this is what I think is going to happen. Uh, do you try to make him a defensive tackle and put about 25, 30 pounds on him and make him a defensive tackle uh, next to a Joshua Horton or something along those lines and let him earn his living there as opposed to trying to take a shorter defensive end and, you know, fit him into a position where you might have taller, bigger, faster, lankier guys that can make a greater impact on the on the edge than Reuben Bain might be able to at the college level. Uh, what do you think of that idea? You know, my eyebrows kind of raised a little bit whenever you said that, because that was something that I just hadn't really considered. You it's know, called my great thought, vision, my man. It's great vision. You know, my first thought that you were going to say, was, you know, maybe stand him up, make him an outside linebacker and kind of, you know, put him in that hybrid uh, position, you know, maybe kind of use him like a jack a little bit uh, where, you know, you, you, you have him come off the edge sometimes and, you know, like pure passing situations, you maybe drop him into coverage uh, a little bit because whenever I looked at his skill set, you know, those were really, you know, the things that, that, that kind of, you know, popped out to me. Um, is that uh, he's he, he's re his speed definitely feels like that's kind of his strength um, in in terms of you know his pure pass rushing ability you know he he, he uses his speed very well as a pass rusher um, he's got a really good motor too you know he's he's got he's got range too you know he's got a lot of clips of him you know running guys down you know like 10, 15 yards down the field. Uh, on you know like these quick little screen passes and perimeter passes and that kind of stuff 
so that was kind of, you know, where my head first went was, you know, if, you know, if you are going to make him not a defensive end, I'm thinking, you know, put him, put him outside. Uh, because if you are going to move him to the interior, and this is just kind of a fact, uh, this is just kind of a, a, a fact of the matter. Um, there are not a ton of, you know, true freshman interior defensive linemen that have the physicality and the size to come in and play right away. Most of these guys need to put on muscle in year one. They need to put on a substantial amount of weight. And sometimes that can take a season or two for them to really, you know, for, for them to really get a hold of. They need some time on, you know, a Miami weight program, on a Miami nutrition program and all this stuff. And you look at, you know, you look at the skill set that he has, you know, he's really good on the edge. You know, he is a really good edge rusher. And you see sometimes they like to stunt him inside. You know, he mostly played five technique. But, you know, this is a guy who, you know, th- this this last season in his highlight tape, he never, you know, I never saw him line up closer than a five technique. So if you are going to move him into the interior, he, it's probably going to be a little bit of a, a little bit of a longer project. Yes, yeah, so this is going to be really interesting uh, to see how he shapes up against the competition at Miami and what position he ends up at. And it's going to be a drama that we are going to be watching uh, throughout, you know, the, the months here leading up to the, to the 2023 football season. And they're not going to need Ruben Bain to do a ton next season. I don't believe so. He is going to have time to develop wherever they feel is the best place to put him. And that is something that we will continue to monitor here moving forward so if you like this content uh hit your subscribe button hit your like button it helps us with the algorithms at youtube if you're not yet a subscriber to canesport.com uh please come on over and and become one Uh, we have an introductory ten dollar special that will take you up to the start of next football season for steven wagner i'm gary Furman. thank you so much for joining us today and we'll see you next time everybody